Welcome back everyone. Now that we've taken a look at the vehicle's application and the data that will be in the table that we'll use to connect to using our API, it's finally time now to start creating our API. So the first record that we will need is the scripted REST service or the scripted REST API record itself. And this will serve as the foundation for our entire API. So let's take a look. So in Studio, we'll go to create a new application file and we'll look for the scripted REST API record. So we'll select that. We'll give it a name, vehicles, pressing tab, will populate the API ID automatically. We've got some protection policies here. We won't look at these now, but some of them may be familiar to you already if you come from a scripting background in ServiceNow where you can restrict access to your scripts. So let's save that record. Now let's take a look at a few things here. The first thing is the default ACL there, scripted REST external default. We're not gonna change that now. We're gonna discuss access controls for APIs later in this series. It's a very important topic, so we'll discuss that later. Under content negotiation, by default, the system will populate fields for the request and the response to accept both JSON and XML formats. But unless you absolutely need to support XML, depending on the clients that are gonna be connecting to your API, you can just go ahead and populate them both only with JSON because that is the standard for REST APIs. So we'll go ahead and override those defaults and then just to replace the default values there with application slash JSON. If we go to documentation, you can actually provide a link here to your API documentation. And I can't stress the importance of having good quality documentation for your API. As with anything in software development, you really need quality documentation. Otherwise, your users won't know how to connect to the API. They won't necessarily know what to expect, what parameters they need to provide, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll need to provide documentation for that. If you want to have a look at a really good example of API documentation, go to the developer portal of ServiceNow and have a look at the API reference there. So what we can do here is for this simple demonstration, we'll just go ahead and create a new API page, a new UI page rather in ServiceNow. So we'll come to UI pages, we'll create a new record here, just so we've got something to put in that field in our API. And we'll give it a name, vehicles API documentation. We won't categorize it, we'll just leave it as general. We'll provide a short description here. And then we'll just go ahead and I'll just paste a very simple HTML, jelly XML <laughs> uh, text in here and save it. And we'll take a look at it after we provide the role that we need or that you will need to access this uh, UI page. So I'll just go ahead here and select our integration role. Click OK. And if we click on the endpoint and try it, this is basically what it looks like. Nothing really dramatic, but we've got a start. And we've got now something we can put into our API record. So we'll come back there. And we'll just pop that link straight in there and provide a short description. Okay, so if we have a look a little bit further down, we see here we've got some red data links. The first one is versioning. There's a separate video in this series on versioning. So we'll discuss that then. If we scroll a little bit further down, we've got a few different tabs here. The first one is resources, which we're going to discuss in the next video. Okay, the resource will be the HTTP methods that we'll use to get data, create data, delete data, etc. You can provide some request headers here and you can also provide some query parameters, but we'll get to that later as well when we discuss the get method, okay? There are different ways to provide parameters to the API. One of them is in the query itself and one is in the path, but we'll talk about those once we actually start creating our resources. So that's it, we'll go ahead and update that. And we have now created the foundation record for our scripted REST API. And that's it. We have now created the foundation record for our scripted REST API. In the next video, we'll discuss resources.